RealAirCulture.com's coverage of the 2011 Farm Progress Show in Regina is brought to you by Morris. Kid, on one of your new products at the show is uh, right behind us. What is it? You betcha. This is Mor er, Morris's answer to sectional control. Sectional control meaning that if you're overlapping with your drill in the field, you're double seeding, you're double fertilizing, and it's really kind of the hot button in the industry right now. I think uh, all of the tank manufacturers are trying to come up with a system that's effective to minimize that cost of overseeding. Uh, you know, canola prices, seed prices are extremely high, and so you don't want to be overseeding. Generally, the crop isn't as good when you double seed. Fertilizer prices is high, are high, so there's no need to overseed that as well. So. Um, you know, the last couple of years, sectional control has become a big deal. We've tried, uh, we've experimented with slides uh, on the Morris tank. You could always manually shut your tank off from your meter roller manually by moving slides over top of the meter roller. So our first generation was we added some hydraulic cylinders to a half shut off. And we offer that in the marketplace. There's limitations to a slide type system though. As you can imagine, when you put that slide over the meter roller, depending on what product you're seeding at the time, such as canola, where that meter roller is moving at such a slow RPM because you're putting such a slow rate on, it takes a substantial amount of time for that meter roller to clear out. So you really have to time your monitor such that it's shutting off at the appropriate time so you're not still overseeding. You know, it cleans out pretty quick with fertilizer, but you still can be overseeding in spots. Conversely, if you want to open up your slides now because you're not overlapping, you have to time the monitor such that it opens that slide in time to fill that meter roller and get it on at the right time. And we just weren't comfortable with that. We, we ran, we had two prototypes running in the field this year. We had two great cooperators that worked with us on a slide system. We had a nine run system, so we had nine slides on it. So technologically, there was a lot of stuff in there. There was a lot of hydraulic lines a lot of hydraulic rams to get those nine slide systems and that's per tank so now you've got four tanks so now you've got 36 of them that you're controlling and and we just weren't real comfortable with the, the shortcomings of the slide system so our answer is what we're seeing here today and and it's a it's a mechanical gear drive system each meter roller each meter roller section is divided individually so we can put a total of a nine run system on this so depending on the size of your seating tool we will match up the number of runs to the size of your seating tool and we can instantaneously uh, either engage that that particular meter roller or disengage that particular meter roller through the gear system that we have and I'll start it up for you here Sean so we so the master clutch was on when I flipped that switch. I can shut them all off on, at one time. On the monitor. On the monitor, I've, I've shut off. As you can see, none of the sprockets are moving. All right? So just to give you a description of the system, this is the drive shaft. So that's hydraulically driven because it's a variable rate technology system. So that's hydraulically driven. In the back is actually the drive for your meter roller section. Okay. Okay? And the sprocket in the middle is the one that either disengages or engages to drive your meter roller section. And that will be controlled by this hyd little hydraulic cylinder on each meter roller section, and it will push this cam, which disengages that sprocket, or engages that sprocket. So I'm gonna start it up again, so I'll hit the master switch. So everything's running, and if Sean, if you get a shot, Probably that middle one is the best one to look at. I'm going to shut that off from my, from my uh, monitor here. So as you can see, that little drive sprocket now has disengaged your meter roller section. So there's no more seed going there. No more seed going, so it's absolutely instantaneous. So when your, your, your uh, GPS system tells your monitor that I don't need seed in that particular run, it's going to automatically disengage that section. Now I'm doing it manually here, but that can be programmed into, or that will be programmed into the system based on your guidance. And as you're starting to overlap a particular uh, area of your field, it will automatically disengage. When you want to engage again, it's as easy. I'm doing it manually because we don't have the, the map here, but it, it automatically is going to turn that section back on. The, uh, the gears mesh 
and now it's metering instantaneously. Do you have any, any uh, data, Don, on how much people are overseeding without some of these systems? You know, I don't. I don't have anything factual, Sean. Uh, certainly the guys that we worked with with the slide system this year, they feel that they paid for their system in one year just by not overseeding. When you're, again, you're talking 7 or $8 a pound canola, an expensive fertilizer. fertilizer yeah. It doesn't take long to pay for this type of a system. So, so does um, this kind of system fit into something like a variable rate seeding situation? Oh, absolutely, for sure. Yeah, because it is hydraulically driven. Uh, the Topcon monitor system uh, obviously is VRT compatible. I've used that myself on our own farm. Works very effectively. And this is just another step up from a basic variable rate system. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, you know, I guess it looks like it's, uh, in terms of uh, simplicity, it's quite very simple. It is, it's very logical. I mean, we've all used press drills, hole drills that use a mechanical gear drive system. This is similar to that, although it's got a lot more technology in it from the monitor system to tell it to engage or disengage. We're using some small hydraulic cylinders. They're only an inch in diameter very little hydraulic flow required to engage and disengage. Um, just a real effective, simple system. Do you have any idea what percentage of the market is, like of the new drills that are selling? Yeah. Are most farmers seeing the value right away in these kinds of systems? I think they are seeing the value. Uh, I had one of the fellows I know from Alberta that was in the booth today. He said, in five years, you won't sell a tank that doesn't have sectional control. I think, again, as the price of seed goes up, there's just a real motivation to not be overseeding out there. Well, and like you said, the, 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 the area of the field that it's overseeded, it never does as well anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you've doubled the fertilizer, you've doubled the seed, and certainly on a canola plant, for example, it doesn't like to be crowded. And here we are with an expensive seed, putting more on where it doesn't like it. So, so what, what do you see as the future with these kinds of systems? Like, where, where, where do we go from here? You know, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I think, uh, and we, we, we actually met with some seed growers yesterday, and it's very interesting. I think ultimately you'll see the industry getting away from the pounds per acre and being more specific on seed count. I think going more to like a seeds per acre yep. or a seeds per or plants per square foot type of measurement. I, absolutely, yeah. We'll yeah. see that down the road. So what do you think is what do you think is holding us back from what, why aren't we there now? As manufacturers, we probably just haven't put the R&D into it to make that happen. But right. that will happen. But we're there with we're there with uh, crops like corn. Right? Yeah. We seed corn by plants per acre. You bet. You bet. Well, why not with cereals? Yeah, that'll come, and they'll use that same kind of technology to do it here. You bet.